the Hale Pavilion for the Sonoma County League Boys Tournament Championship game. These teams come in with identical 21 and six records, but Hillsburg was the regular season league champion on the year. Piner hoping to gain momentum and take home the tournament championship here in 2018. Hello everyone, I'm Dave Cox along with Ryland Cobry and the prospectors knocked off Hillsburg in the preseason in December so they know how to get it done. However, in 2018, they have not been able to knock off the Greyhounds. Really hard to beat a team three times. That's what Hillsburg's gonna try and do tonight. And the two games in league play were uh, pretty uneven, at least the score said. The game, the when they played in December, a three-point game. So expected something like that in a really good atmosphere. Big win for Piner on Windsor over the Annalee Tigers, and Christian Gutierrez led the way in that one. Gutierrez is a guy, he can score the basketball in a variety of ways. He can step out, he'll knock down shots from outside right here. You see a pump fake, one dribble, jump shot. The next clip you're gonna see him drive to the rack, get fouled, go up, make the bucket, and then he'll bleed out in transition. Hilton's gonna have to get back on defense and stop him early. Yeah, Christian Gutierrez ended up with 22 points on the night against the Annalee Tigers to get the prospectors here and for Hillsburg Trey Chapman has been a monster all year long at six foot eight you know what they're gonna do with Trey Chapman they're gonna give him the ball at the block and he's gonna either try and get inside for a dunk or get a four footer you're gonna have to send some doubles at him maybe try and make things a little bit difficult for him down low because if you don't he could have a big night yeah Trey Chapman had a huge game against uh, Piner earlier in the year. So this should be a great one now. They, when they met at Piner earlier in the season, the prospectors had their moments early on, especially when they got some steals underneath like this and then transition baskets. Here's Brayden Briscoe doing it on the run. And Hillsburg is not a one-man band. Their freshman, Dylan Heyman, is very capable of stepping back and hitting a three. It's the prospectors and the Greyhounds coming up next. Bear Republic Brewing Company invites you to discover their diverse menu, family-friendly atmosphere, and freshly brewed beers on tap. Both brew pubs in Healdsburg and Ronard Park serve up traditional pub fare with a twist, including signature burgers, salads, and specialty items like brewer's mac and cheese, or the classic barbecue pork sandwich made with sauce from Peter Brown Tribute Ale. The menu at the Ronard Park Brew Pub includes pizza and delicious flatbread sandwiches for lunch Monday through Friday. And the original Bear Republic Brew Pub in historic downtown Healdsburg has locally produced artisan cheeses and charcuterie plates carefully crafted with unique ingredients. Both locations offer a relaxed, casual dining experience, perfect for lunch, dinner, or anytime. Open every day at 1130. For all details, visit BearRepublic.com. Hi, this is Richard Norgrove of Bear Republic Brewing Company. Come visit us in Rona Park or Hillsburg for an award-winning Racer 5, Pace Car Racer, or Double Lot Hillsner. When you come to Oil Stop, we'll serve you and your passengers with a complimentary beverage. Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite, coffee, tea, hot chocolate, hot cider, or even a bottle of cold, refreshing water. Want to check your emails, surf the web, or get some work done when you're in for service? Use our high-speed Wi-Fi. It's free. We'll also provide a free car wash with your oil change so your car looks as good as it runs. How convenient is that? Oil Stop, we're here to serve you. to create a good life for you and your family. Protecting what you've earned is important. At George Peterson Insurance Agency, our local agents work with you to make sure your home and belongings are protected from potential risks. When it comes to you and your family, we're committed to providing you with the right insurance for your needs. We work hard to ensure that your risks are covered so you can focus on what's most important. George Peterson Insurance, we've got your back. Cardinal Newman High offers a Catholic college preparatory whole person education. 
with a dedicated faculty and state-of-the-art facilities, your daughter or son will have the advantages of the highest caliber educational opportunity in Sonoma County. Learn more at cardinalnewman.org. All 8th grade students are invited to Preview Day, Monday, February 26th, 8.15 to 1.15. Here we go, we're ready to start this one. Should be a great matchup between Hillsburg and Pioneer, and always fun when you get to play at Hale Pavilion. It's a real treat, and uh, the crowd is coming out tonight. That's nice to see this huge support tomorrow night. Of course, the NBL boys, Rylan, you've been in this position before, you know what it's like. Yeah, you know what it's like, you don't sleep the night before. The floor's a little longer too, so you always kind of have to take that into play and see how both teams uh, play with that, especially Piner, a team that likes to get out and run, try and wear down Hillsburg a little bit. We're going to take a look at the starting lineup. Braden Briscoe, Adonis Gutierrez, Scott Erickson gets the start tonight. I think it's the first time all year that he started. He's been out with that knee injury, and they had an injury to uh, their great guard, Sadler, last on Wednesday night, Jared Sadler. So Scotty Erickson will be thrust into the starting lineup tonight for Mike Erickson, so boy, you can see the brace on the knee. He's a great shooter, outstanding player, freshman and sophomore year. They hope he has a big game here tonight in this big stage. Yeah, and you wonder what this team would be like if they had Erickson and Sadler the whole year, but uh, tonight will be interesting to see how Erickson plays. And the Hillsburg Hounds, Heyman is just a freshman, Swan a very good shooter, and of course Trey Chapman at six foot eight is the matchup problem that creates a huge problem for Piner. Yasha Makaram is the head coach here for Hillsburg, done a nice job with the Hounds. They are the regular season champion. They will be moving on to NCS. You'd love to have a win tonight on your resume going into that NCS meeting. Yeah, and even if they don't, though, you look at the season as a whole, first league title since 1998 for them. It's been 20 years, and you don't really associate Hillsburg basketball at the top of the SEL. At least you haven't for a while, and this year they, they've been the best, and uh, Piner is going to take their best shot at them tonight. Yeah, no doubt about that. And the prospectors, when they are shooting well, they are a very good basketball team. They've got to be able to hit their outside shots, and they've got to get those transition baskets created by their defense. Yeah, Piners is gonna, they're gonna be five out on offense. They don't have a big really inside, and it's gonna force the bigs for Hillsburg to come out and guard, and sometimes you'll see it where they'll create matchup problems on the other end and force those big guys to come out of the game. But Hillsburg, they're athletic, they're a lot longer than Piner. And that's the one thing that concerns you for Mike Erickson. Mateo Tomerlin, also a very tall guard at six foot one. So yeah, their guards go six four, six one, six two. That's difficult to stop if they're hitting their shots from beyond the arc. They're gonna be a tough team. We saw them earlier in the year live against Cardinal Newman, and they had a tough time hitting from the perimeter, and that was their undoing in that contest. Yeah, we showed Trey Chapman in the highlight package, but there's a couple guys you could go to here. Uh, that could have been on that, on that highlight screen. So uh, they got plenty of guys, they got a lot of bodies. Uh, they're athletic and, and they're fun to watch. But Mike Erickson is not only the, one of the best coaches in the SEL, but possibly one of the best coaches in all of Northern California. He's been doing this for a long time and uh, this is gonna be a fun matchup. Yeah, no doubt about it. When you talk about Mike Erickson, everybody agrees he gets the most out of his talent year in and year out. Absolutely, you gotta go the black shirt, it's Bill Belichick S2, right? He's, wearing, he's been wearing that black shirt for a long time, yeah, standing yeah. up in front of the Piner bench. All right, we are about ready to go in this one. A packed house at Hale Pavilion, and the Prospectors and the Greyhounds ready to meet for the fourth time this year. We are underway. One thing to keep in mind here, Piner struggled early last time these two teams played. They can come out, get some confidence early, it's gonna be a big help. Briscoe gets it up to Scotty Erickson who drives and dishes. There's Adonis Gutierrez, he's just a sophomore and he sticks his first shot of the night. Erickson with the assist, he can penetrate, drive, and now you get a steal on the other end. There it is, and here's Christian Gutierrez and he will go to the line. So right away we see the 
the uh, transition opportunity for Donnie Erickson who drives. Yeah, he's so tough in transition. Showing the replay there of Erickson. Just one dribble, sees the defender come over for a little bit of help, but it's a kick out for an easy three. And here is Christian Gutierrez. We talked about him in the open. That 22-point performance. And he's just a junior. His younger brother is a sophomore. Scotty Erickson, also a junior. So you can expect Piner to be right back in the playoff hunt next year, although the leagues are going to look a lot differently. That was just recently voted on by NCS and approved the new NBL Oaks division and Redwood division, which is going to make things a little bit more competitive, I think, on both ends. Yeah, and I think it's the right move. Keep in mind, Heyman, the foul was on Heyman there. Gutierrez is a nice job. And Hillsborough, you got to watch the fouls. And Piner, they want to attack the rim, draw contact, get those fouls up early for this Hillsborough team. Tomerlin, now Hubble. They're looking for Chapman right away. And Brennan Carpenter has got his hands full at six foot three, going against the 6'8 center. Also giving away a few pounds, but Brennan is a great competitor. And Brennan comes up with a steal right here. Second turnover. Man, Piner's so fun to watch defensively. If you love team defense, helping out, helping each other, two steals to start this game, it looks so good. Scotty Erickson, and there's the block. That would be block number 95 on the year. Well, I said that Piner wants to attack the rim and try and draw fouls, but that's one reason you don't want to go inside is because of that man right there. Yeah, definitely adds an, an element where you think, okay, I've got a lane, I can go up, but six foot eight coming across from the weak side can make up a lot of ground, especially with his wingspan. Trey Chapman is just a junior, so Hillsburg's gonna have a tremendous amount of talent returning next year as well. Here's Scotty Erickson up top now. Christian Gutierrez takes the pass. Briscoe back to Erickson. A 4-0 lead for the Prospectors. Adonis thought about another three. Briscoe will, and nails it. Braden Briscoe, and what a start for Piner as they lead 7-0 here in the first. Everybody's touching the basketball, moving it around. Let's find the best shot. Two really good ones so far for Piner. Tomerlin in and out. The rebound by Gutierrez, and quickly down the floor, Carpenter misses. Wow. Hillsburg, they're so long, they've got just basketball players. When you look at guys, you want guys that can do a lot of different things. Defend, you want to be able to shoot. They got all that with all five guys on the floor. That's what it's going to be. Chapman, nice help that time by Gutierrez as he takes it away. 7-0 lead for Piner. Prospectors keeping everybody on the perimeter, trying to pull Chapman out of the middle. Adonis in and out. We'll see if Hillsburg can get on the board. And I'm thinking if Piner gets the next basket before Hillsburg score, Yasha may be calling timeout. Yeah, right now on defense for Hillsburg, it's tough. Piner's got five guards. They're just Eric, kicking. Erickson with the steal. Gutierrez, got it! Will he take the timeout? Nope, he's gonna let him play. He says, nope, let's keep going. Tomerlin looked over, coach, do you want to talk or not? And he said, keep going. 9-0 Piner. What a start for the prospectors. Heyman, the freshman. Gutierrez has his second rebound, and Piner will try to make it a double-digit lead here in the first quarter. A little bit of uncharted territories here for Hillsburg. Haven't played a lot of these big games, and letting this young team kind of really feel what it's like in front of this crowd, this kind of atmosphere, to get down early. Crowd making some noise here tonight, and what a fun atmosphere. Here's Gutierrez underneath. Blocked from behind, no call, letting him play. Gutierrez tries it again. Nice defense that time by Hubble, who got two blocks, and now Piner is going to bring in three subs. Sadler will enter the game right now. He was a little shaken up. You can see he's got a brace on his knee, on his uh, ankle, excuse me. Little tweak of the ankle on Wednesday, and he only played in the first quarter against Stanley. He's a guy that's really kept the ship floating without Scotty Erickson in the lineup for 
most of the season. There's Braden Briscoe, and he got it off the glass at the buzzer. The shot clock went off, but Briscoe beat it, and it's 11-0. Good contest, not much you can do there for Hillsburg. Hubble right side, up high they go, and there's Chapman underneath. You're looking for the weak side there of your fighter to come over and try and knock that away because Chapman's so big. And if you're Hillsborough, you just throw it up. If you throw it up high enough, nobody from Piner is going to be able to, to get it other than Chapman. And he went up, got it, and laid it up. 3.30 to go here in the quarter. Briscoe on a drive, blocked. Pounds trying to get some momentum now. That one off the mark. Chapman offensive board, and he puts it in with the left hand. He's so tough in there. He's so tough. You just got to get a body on him early, try and box him out. But man, he's so long, so big. Here's Sadler, great sophomore guard. That one from the outside, no good. Kept alive by San Ramon. Sadler now on a drive, there's the big man. Saw that lane and it was too tempting not to go for it, but you have to know that sooner or later, the big man's gonna be there to meet you Third when you get close to the rack. Third block already, Fighter has to start kicking it out. You can, if you take it in there and he's around you, you start penetrating and throwing it out, you're gonna find an open shot on the outside. Here's Christian Gutierrez. Tries to put it up around the block this time, and it's Hubble who has the rebound. Hillsburg with a big rebounding advantage, and you can expect that to be the case all night long. Seven point lead for the Prospectors. They're looking for Chapman. They get it to him at the high post. San Ramon trying to stop him down the lane. Can't do it. Three in a row for Chapman, and it's a five point game. Yeah, he's tough to guard. He gets it right around the elbow. You'll live with it if you're a Piner, because if he's at the block, you're going to go down a double. But when he gets it at the elbow, you got to play straight up, send somebody over once he starts attacking. And it was just one dribble and an easy left-hand layup. Jacob Monday, very good three-point shooter. The rebound to Vasquez, Xavier Vasquez, who brings it up now for the Hounds. Hillsburg trying to tighten things up. There's the freshman, Dylan Heyman, 4-3. Timeout Piner as Heyman makes it a two point game just like that. Wow. Heyman, good look. These two teams are, are, it's really contrasting basketball. One end you got five out, we're going to penetrate, get threes. The other end they're going to the big guy. But when Hillsburg starts making shots from outside, then they're really tough to defend. Down low, it's been very tough. This is what you face when you try to go to the rack. You know what I like about him too, and right there, that one a little more authority on the block in terms of how hard he's hitting it. But a lot of times you see these big guys, they block it and they're just trying to swat it, get the big play, instead of kind of tapping it to themselves, giving their guys a chance to get the basketball and go the other way. He's had a few, two of the three have been like that. That third one that we just showed right there, a little more, he just swats it out of bounds. So a two point game, Piner scored the first 11. Not to Efrian. Gives it up to Sadler. Looking for a screen from Carpenter and a little bump that time by Hubble. What a start to this one. If you like basketball, this is the place to be this weekend, Friday and Saturday. SCL NBL doesn't get any better at the high school level tomorrow night. Of course, the NBL girls game will be Newman Montgomery, the boys game, Montgomery Windsor. Carpenter trying to pass it underneath, but Hubble steals it away. Heiner's done a nice job taking care of the ball here in the first quarter. San Ramon taps that one out of bounds. It'll stay with the Greyhounds. Scotty and Adonis back on the floor now for Piner. You're going to see Erickson and Sadler. They're going to be fun to watch on offense now. These two guys haven't had a ton of time to work together this year just because of injuries. But guys are playmakers. A 
Lob to Chapman. Tries to twist and go. I believe they're going to call that a shooting foul and give him two at the free throw line. It will be Trey Chapman shooting a pair. Yeah, they sent two guys at him there. You want Sadler, 24, on the backside coming at him. And then it was San Ramon as well trying to get his hand in there. San Ramon picked up the personal, and Chapman misses the front end. I like what Piner's doing, though. They're going to deny the man on the wing so that they can't make that entry pass inside. San Ramon did it, able to knock one out of bounds right towards us here on the sideline. If they can do that, try to eliminate the ball ever from getting inside the Chapman. Missed them both. Scotty Erickson trying to post up, slapped away. Nice defense underneath that time by Jack Summer. Very good playmaker coming off the bench, and there's a block on Summer. As he tried to cut Gutierrez off from the baseline. A little too stagnant for Piner on offense on this possession. Guy's got to keep moving. Summer was really a key guy in the last meeting against Piner. He made six of eight coming off the bench from beyond the arc. The one thing with five out here for Piner, I just said it, but say it again, you got to have good motion. You got to keep moving around or else you're pretty easy to guard if you just got five guys standing around the perimeter. Shot clock and game clock are off by about a few tenths. I don't even think it's a full second, so Heiner will just work this all the way down. Here's Sadler, tried to pass it to Carpenter, and it goes out of bounds with two seconds to go, so the Hounds will have an opportunity for a buzzer beater right here to try to take the lead. And Vasquez won't even get it off. Yeah, no, they will. Heyman, he got a pretty good look. I think the clock might have started a little bit late right there. So it's a great first quarter. And Piner leads it 11 to 9 after one here in the Sonoma County League Championship game. We'll take a break right here and be back with the start of quarter number two in just a moment. Bear Republic Brewing Company invites you to discover their diverse menu, family-friendly atmosphere, and freshly brewed beers on tap. Both brew pubs in Healdsburg and Ronard Park serve up traditional pub fare with a twist, including signature burgers, salads, and specialty items like brewer's mac and cheese, or the classic barbecue pork sandwich made with sauce from Peter Brown Tribute Ale. The menu at the Ronard Park Brew Pub includes pizza and delicious flatbread sandwiches for lunch Monday through Friday. And the original Bear Republic Brew Pub in historic downtown Healdsburg has locally produced artisan cheeses and charcuterie plates carefully crafted with unique ingredients. Both locations offer a relaxed, casual dining experience, perfect for lunch, dinner, or any time. Open every day at 1130. For all details, visit BearRepublic.com. Hi, this is Richard Norgrove of Bear Republic Brewing Company. Come visit us in Rona Park or Hillsburg for an award-winning Racer 5, Pace Car Racer, or Double Ought Hillsner. I want to thank Bear Republic Brewing Company for sponsoring tonight's game great place to have lunch or dinner bring the family two locations in sonoma county one in hillsburg the original and now in roner park as well bear republic brewing company here we go now 11-9 greyhounds with the ball to start the second quarter and it's Heyman to the rack he got it and won the freshman will try to complete an old-fashioned Averages 13.4 points per game and eight rebounds per game as a freshman. The company, here Young, we go now, 11. 20 points last time they faced Piner. Hit a three earlier this time on the drive. And, you know, I was surprised they didn't call a timeout early in this game after they got down 9-0. Ended up, ended up working out, they played through it, and now they've got the lead. Coach had faith in his players. He didn't panic, saves that timeout for later, and actually it was Coach Erickson that took the first time out after Hillsburg regained momentum or actually established it for the first time. Now it's the Hounds by one after the Heyman three-point play. Adonis Gutierrez who started the game with a basket for Piner and now it's Christian. Sadler looking underneath. Carpenter wide open but it's disrupted by Chapman. Didn't block it but he certainly altered Carpenter's look. Knew he was around. So tough. 
Swan gets it. Desmond Swan with his first basket of the night. Heldsberg has multiple guys that can do it. Showing it right now early. Heyman, Chapman, and then Swan. Sadler takes it down low. Here's Scotty Erickson with his first shot of the night. Adonis hustles after the offensive board and gets a fresh 35 for the prospectors. Christian Gutierrez takes an extra step. Two turnovers now for Piner, four for Hillsburg. Here comes Braden Briscoe and George San Ramon back on the floor. Hillsburg's done a great job adjusting. I think early on, a little nervous, weren't getting out on shooters, and now they've been able to get out, and then when the ball gets inside, they've been able to close down shop and get some nice blocks by Chapman and close down the passing lanes as well. Hounds looking down low. Chapman wants it. They get it to him. Swings it back to Swan. Nice recovery by the defense. And San Ramon gets the steal. San Ramon gets it out to Adonis. He's got a lane. Kicks it back up. Christian drives. Stops. Doesn't get the floater. San Ramon with a great offensive board. But it doesn't go. If you're Mike Erickson, that's a good basketball possession right there. He swung it around. You got an open shot and a second chance at it. You talked about how the league meetings were a bit lopsided, a 43-26 win at Piner, and then a 59-45 win, both by Hillsburg. That one up at the Hillsburg's home gym. There's a shot off the mark. That early meeting, though, in December has to give a little bit of confidence to Piner. They beat them. Yeah, it was early in the season, but they do have that experience to fall back on. Yeah, like I said, it's tough to beat a team three times. And look, Piner's beaten them once, so they know what it's like. Hillsburg, though, the thing about them, they've gotten better as the season's gone on, and that's what you want as a coach. That win by Piner was a 54-51 win. 5.25 to go, Hillsburg by three. There it is, good. Jack Summer, his first three of the night. And he buries it. Great guy to have coming off the bench. Balance scoring right now. Piner tries to put a little more pressure on. And Hillsburg ends up taking advantage of it. Gets a wide open look. Piner needs a basket. They haven't scored in quite some time. Christian Gutierrez, great drive to the basket. Not intimidated. He knew the block might be there, but he had a little something for it. A nice little arm reversal, and he came back. Looked like he was going to go to the left side, and he came back to the right side and laid it in. Much needed basket for the prospectors. 4.40 to go in the first half. Heyman up and over the top. Gutierrez has the rebound. He has four rebounds for Piner. Great all-round player. He does a little bit of everything for Coach Erickson. Here's Scott Erickson now, driving, spinning. Doesn't get it, but he goes to the line. Talking with his dad, the head coach said his shots are just a little off. His timing, coming off that knee injury, he's not as crisp as he was. They hope that he can get there in time for NCS. Yeah, man, it takes, it takes some time to come back, especially from the knee. This is a good move here, Erickson. Kick out, Gutierrez, such a tough finish. And we'll readjust the shot. Scotty Erickson made the first one to make it 17-14. See if he can get both. Does not get the second. Hyder now, a little more denial, a little more pressure, trying to just make everything more difficult for Hillsburg to just swing the ball around and get it inside to Chapman. And I'm glad Erickson's played tonight. He was, when I was playing at Montgomery in the NBL, and that was still when Piner was in the NBL, he was running around on the sideline uh, for his dad, so kind of cool full circle moment here. Yeah, you know he's been around it his whole life. Been in the gym. Great player. All those great Piner teams. 
Lucas Deveni, Andrew Floor, so many good names have come through that program. Nice steal stepping in front of that pass was Jack Herman. Heiner trying to get on a roll now. San Ramon kicks it underneath. Herman to San Ramon. A little strong. You can see every time Piner shoots inside, they're a little tentative. That pass right into the hands of Summer. Summer trying to go the distance and does. Jack Summer with the steal on the lay-in to add to the lead. Well, he's almost playing center field there because Piner, you've got guys open on the perimeter and Summer just kind of sitting around. Piner finally decided to throw it out, try and get a look, and Summer's right there to get a steal. Sadler, a little off the mark. And here come the Hounds, quickly up the floor, and it's a basket and one for Desmond Swan. Briscoe tried to take the charge, but didn't get there in time. Yeah. Getting out in front, Swan, and you're right, just wasn't there in time at his feet. He was kind of moving back, and it's tough. You, you, when you know a guy's coming down the lane and going to barrel into you, it's so hard to just sit there and wait for him. And if you wait too long, the guy's just going to go around you anyway. It's actually Jake Herman that tried to take that charge, his first personal foul of the night. Eight-point lead for Hillsburg. Heiner led 11-0 to start the night. Ephraim loses the handle. Teo Tomerlin comes up with a steal, and he's fouled. Little frustration right now for Piner. Think about the great start. And since then, really, it's a, what, 22-5 run right now for Hillsburg since that 9-0 start for Piner. A little off the mark that time, Summer Sadler has it. Piner trying to run the floor, but the Hounds get back nicely. There's Gutierrez, and he goes up strong. Chapman is not on the floor right now, and the prospectors need to take advantage. Of, oh, no, he is on the floor. I'm sorry, I didn't see him. If you're Piner, I think you have to run. I think that's the adjustment you need to make if you're Coach Erickson. How could I miss the you, six foot eight guy? Yeah, use the floor to your advantage right now, the longer floor at least, and get out and try and get easy buckets. Now when you played here, was it, did you notice the difference in size on the floor or was it really not that big of a deal? I, I think you start to notice it late in the game. Um, I, I think, you know, I will give Lawrence Phillips, LP, uh, a lot of credit because he had us in such great condition at Montgomery. But yeah, you do start to notice. And I think the thing you, you notice the most is, at least for me as a player, is it is kind of weird to have the crowd, the seats are so, the bleachers are so far back from the floor. I don't know, it doesn't make a difference to a lot of guys, but for me, sometimes you, you tend to notice that sort of thing. So Sumner having a nice night off the bench. He's got seven points all in the second quarter. It's an eight point lead. Piner trying to battle back now. Two minutes to go in the second. Gutierrez oh, tries to get it over Chapman. And Trey Chapman says, not tonight. Steal, but a foul. Piner thought they came up with that one. Shot fake and drive. Shot fake and drive. Can't say it enough. Chapman came out. You have had to guard Gutierrez out there. If you're Gutierrez, he puts a shot fake up. He probably gets a layup. Gutierrez was called for the personal. He's got two, and Summer will go to the line. Summer such a great shooter. Hillsburg, very good free throw shooting team overall. Foul starting to mount a little bit as Gutierrez ends up coming down with his fifth. Sadler to Gutierrez. Jake Monday off the mark. Scotty Erickson, offensive rebound, and he goes up strong. He'll go to the line. you think it'd be Hillsburg that'd be all over the offensive boards right now, but it's Piner that's gotten quite a few so far. Most of them have just been flat out of effort rebounds. Yeah. 
Erickson misses the first. He'll, he will shoot two. I'll tell you one thing that does make a difference as a player is you got the two three point lines and sometimes it, it makes guys move out farther to shoot their three. And it makes a big difference, especially in high school. You used to play them up on the front line, and then you think you need to move back, and you start taking longer and longer threes. Heyman spinning in the lane, a little out of control. Somehow comes up with his own miss, however. Chapman tries to keep it alive. Vasquez does, but he's on the line. So Piner will take over. Scott Erickson did a great job just hanging out, waiting for the, the entry into the post. Didn't come. Was already there, able to help out. Force a tough shot. Key stretch of the game right here. Final minute of the second quarter. And the Hounds lead it by eight. Piner can close this gap a little bit and grab some momentum going into the locker room. We could be in for a great second half. Here's Scotty Erickson driving and scoring all the way to the rack. Four points now for Erickson, and it's a six-point game. Hillsburg handles the pressure very nicely. Hillsburg was so worried about the ball screen coming after the UCLA cut that it was easy for him to just get to the weak side, get an easy left-hand side layup. Hounds working it down to Chapman. Tough to stop. Trey Chapman has eight. There's, there's really nothing you can do. They had a player behind them on the weak side to help out for the double, but he's so big, he can just go up and get it. Piner is going to hold on for the final shot now. Erickson. Doesn't get a call, doesn't get the shot. Hillsburg at the buzzer, no. And they will head to the locker room. Hillsburg up 27 to 19. Man, Piner got off to the hot start and Hillsburg was so impressive after really the first four minutes of this game. They didn't look like a young team. They looked like a team that has been through a lot of runs early in games where they've gotten down and they're able to come back, play good offense, were really good defensively, force some tough shots for Piner. So it's 27 to 19 at the half. We'll take a break and be back with the highlights, the start of the third quarter in just a moment.
And welcome back. We are getting ready for the start of the third quarter. Interesting first half. Piner started up great, Ryland. They were on a roll, but you knew sooner or later the Hounds were going to get the ball to their big man and get back on track, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, you asked me about the things that are, are different when you're playing at the JC, and I remember the first time I played here was my junior year against Cardinal Newman when they used to have Cardinal Newman Montgomery at the JC, and nerves are the biggest thing. The first time you're out here, nerves are such a big factor, and I think for Hillsburg, it took them a little while to get used to playing in this kind of environment, but once they did, they started to get out, get easy buckets, and Piner really wasn't able to find an answer. They're going to have to make some adjustments in the second half. Let's take a look at the highlights of that first half, starting with the Piner Prospectors. Great start for them, and we're going to take a look at the highlights right here. Yeah, it, it was penetration and kick early. They were getting great looks. I mean, you get a couple open threes. You get a drive, easy layup for Gutierrez. There's another three right there. So for Piner, the offense looked really good, but then they started to struggle, get a little stagnant here. You get another steal, get out, get a, a bucket for, I believe it's Gutierrez along the baseline. That's just good one-on-one -on -one offense. So for Piner to, to kind of crawl back into this, they're only down eight, which I think you got to be happy about because on offense they just struggled after getting the early buckets. So um, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Erickson does, maybe try and get these guys out and a little more. And for Hillsburg on the other end, man, you, you started to see why the big fella is so good. Trey Chapman can score really whenever he wants. Piner was sending the double, but the double, and right here, Chapman on the, on the back side, you got to be there. You sent two guys, it's a little late. It's so tough to guard a big guy like that when you don't have a guy that can match his height, and Piner doesn't really have it. They've done a decent job, though, trying to send two guys, sometimes three, and then on the defensive end, been very good. Chapman, three blocks, really in the first five minutes of the game. So Hillsburg, uh, they've been fun to watch. They've been getting out here. You get another easy basket in transition. Um, they kind of have balanced the score, too. It's going to Chapman a lot early, and then they start moving around and letting other guys score the basketball. Crowd is having fun here tonight at SRJC as we get ready to start the third quarter. Rebounding edge, actually, believe it or not, is for Piner, 10 to nine. Turnovers, Hillsburg five, Piner four. Leading score was Chapman with eight. Christian Gutierrez had seven. And off the bench, Jack Sumner had seven. He was really a key guy. He, he kept Hillsburg going once they got on a roll. Yeah, balanced scoring. You love to see the stat sheet at halftime. Multiple guys getting involved. And that's what you have to do when you start sending those doubles to one player. So here we go. Second half underway. Scotty Erickson, beautiful spin move. Starting to see a little bit of what he can do when he is totally healthy. One on one basketball, great spin move. Better finish. So now Piner picking up. I like what they do. They go full court, make it difficult for Hillsbury to get it up the floor, take some time off the shot clock. Chapman backing in. Nobody can stop him tonight. That's 10 points for Trey Chapman. You have to send a double. You have to send somebody over there to help him out. Maybe it's a guy coming over to dig a little bit, make it tough, but if it's one-on-one, -on -one, he just has the height advantage. It's too difficult. Christian Gutierrez with a fader, partially blocked. Hounds have had a bunch of blocks tonight, four by Chapman, seven total as a team. An eight point lead, there's Chapman again, down low. Into the corner, long three ball is good by Swan. Desmond Swan now has eight points for the Hounds and it's an 11 point lead. I kind of wish I had the uh, Tony Romo ability to kind of circle things on the screen because right there you give it to Chapman and that's just a great read. He sees the guy coming over from the opposite side and there's somebody wide open. Briscoe is the guy coming over to double. You get a great look at three and then Hillsburg on the other end just playing airtight defense. Thanks for pointing out the fact that we do not <laughs> have a telestrator. <laughs> We're working on that. We're working on that. So Man, if you had a telestrator, that would be that'd be big league, Dave. Hey, I, you know, it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> well, if you take a look at the North Coast Section Division Three playoff prediction, Piner might get a pretty good seed. Salesian looks like they're a, a shoe in for the number one seed in Division Three. Campolindo is sitting in the two hole right now, but Piner is in the four seat. That gets you a few home games. 
And uh, with their 21 and six record, that could be right where they end up. Yeah, top of the division three, Salesian and Campolindo. Man, those, those are two different animals in basketball teams. Long three ball again. Swan doesn't get that one. Here come the prospectors. Look at Erickson get out and push. Draws and the foul. That's what you want. He knew he was going to take some contact, but he stuck right with it. And every time he hits the floor, I cringe a little bit wondering about that knee. Chapman wasn't getting back on defense here. It's exactly what you want to do. T.O. Tomerlin picked up his second. See the shot just isn't quite where it used to be for him. It's always such a dangerous shooter, but he will get it back with time. Takes a little bit. Start getting back in, into the flow of a game, especially late in the games. After you've had an injury, first half, you, you feel good. You're really running on adrenaline. And then the second half, after you've been out for a while, it can be tough. You really start to feel it physically. Tomerlin will try one from three-point land. Off the mark, and Briscoe has the rebound. There we go. This is what you want to get. Erickson run the break. Blocked by Tomerlin. Oh, my. We talked about the tall guards, and man, oh, man, have they played well tonight. They're so lanky. Tomerlin gets it to Heyman. There's Chapman underneath. Nothing they can do. 12 points, they're trying to help, they're trying to deny, but what are you gonna do And he's just way taller than everybody else on the floor? Yeah, he's so big, you almost feel like sending two guys over there before he even has it. And then make Hillsburg give it to the guy who's wide open every time. Carpenter, another block, Swan this time. Erickson with a steal and he's fouled by Tomler and that's three on Tomerlin. Little pickpocket action by Scotty Erickson and he'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, he's fired up. He thought it should have been a foul the play before, and then the refs kind of just let him play. He just bulldozer full on, went for the basketball on the steal. Could have been called for a reach. They didn't call it. He gets up, then he wanted an intentional foul. Erickson got the first. The more game free throws he shoots, the more he's going to get back to his former self. And this time he gets them both. Sather will check in. Nine points now for Scott. He's made a living at the free throw line tonight. Piner's going to pick up full court. One, two, two. And I think even if you go a man to man, it's going to be difficult. Force Hillsburg to bring it up. They don't really have a true, true ball handler. Second chance for Swan, and he goes to the line. But you can see what their strategy is, is just to keep the ball up over their head and to throw it over the top of the smaller prospectors. Yeah, this is why I think I think you go to a man-to-man, -man, because you keep guys closer to players. You go a man-to-man -man full court is what I'm saying. That way you pick up, you take about nine seconds off the shot clock, make things tough for Hillsburg. Swan misses the first. San Ramon checking in, he'll try to Block out Chapman. Swan, a senior, doesn't get either. How about that? Prospectors down 10. A lot of time left. We're only about midway through this third quarter at Santa Rosa Junior College's Hale Pavilion. So many great games over the year right here on this floor. And that one is off the mark and out of bounds. So. Hillsburg will take over and Piner will set up some full court pressure. 1 2 2 the last time. Hillsburg is able to get it up pretty quickly. See what they do here. They had a trap in the corner right when Hillsburg got it in. A oh, trap early. I think it's just too easy. Vasquez off the mark. Offensive rebound and put back by Hubble. That's his first basket of the night. Somebody missed a block out assignment right there. Coach Erickson's trying to make adjustments right now. He's going to try a lot of different things. Hillsburg, biggest lead of the night at 12. 
Sadler looking for room to maneuver. Tries to put that up, but Chapman is right there. Three rebounds now for the big guy. Gutierrez with a steal, but he steps out of bounds. Sadler made a nice move, just couldn't kind of square his body up and up. I want to thank Bear Republic Brewing Company for sponsoring tonight's game. With two locations in Sonoma County to serve you, the original Bear Republic up in Hillsburg and the new Bear Republic in Roner Park. Great place to bring the family for lunch or dinner. Bear Republic. And a timeout taken right here by the Hounds. So we'll step aside. Nope, we're going to stay up. It's just a 30-second timeout by Hillsburg. So we talked about the uh, Division III NCS standings. And for Hillsburg, they're in Division IV. And actually, you'd think as a Division IV league champion, you might get a higher seed than the Piner Prospectors, who are in the four spot for NCS Division III. But that's not the case. Division IV is stacked. St. Patrick, St. Vincent, looks like they may be the number one. Stewart Hall's up there somewhere. St. Joseph, Notre Dame is always tough. Hillsburg looks to be somewhere in the six, seven, eight range for that North Coast section Division IV bracket. So we'll have to wait and see. The seating is on Sunday. We will have all the brackets live for you on YSN365.com. There's Chapman underneath. Tapped away. Nice job, Gutierrez. Yeah, that's Division IV. Some smaller schools, but some schools with big names across the state. St. Patrick, St. Vincent, St. Mary's. Got Stuart Hall in there. Good basketball schools. Chapman with another rebound. And we'll talk about the seedings for tomorrow night's team as San Ramon gets a block. There's one for the Piner squad on defense, but it is taken back away. Here comes Heyman, and he takes the bump from San Ramon. Piner's trying to get a little more physical defensively. Last time before the block, picked up full court, get more physical, made it difficult for, the, for Hillsburg to get it all the way up the floor. But man, Hillsburg just kind of been able to weather everything that, that Piner has tried to throw at him so far. Heyman misses the first tomorrow night. It's a big double header. The girls and the boys. Girls game, Newman taking on Montgomery. Newman hasn't lost in league in over four years. And then the boys game will be the Montgomery-Windsor matchup. And Windsor's knocked off Montgomery a couple times this year, so that's going to be a great one as well. Newman girls have been so good for so long. Montgomery, good team this year. Newman just been so dominant. Gutierrez misses. Rebound by Sumner, who's back in the game. Yeah, Montgomery played Newman tough the first time. It was just a six-point game, and that's the only time during their 70-plus game winning streak in NBL that they've been under di double digits in terms of victory. But in the second time, Newman blew them out. So I know Montgomery wants to have a better showing, and, of course, Newman just wants to keep it going. Yeah, if you're Montgomery, you keep that game close. Sometimes Newman, when you play, they play in a lot of lopsided games. You start to make them think a little more. They haven't been in those, those close, tight environments. And if Montgomery can keep it close, it'll be good. And then you got the boys game tomorrow. It's going to be fantastic. Montgomery, both times, had opportunities to beat Windsor. And, and Windsor know how good they are. They're so athletic, so big. Yeah, of course, the Smith twins lead the way for Piner. There's Sadler, I mean, for Montgomery. Chapman hustling for it. San Ramon, who last touched it? It was San Ramon who tapped it out of bounds. 37-24. Piner having trouble getting open looks right now. And... Credit the Hillsburg defense. They've just played very well. They got off to a very slow start tonight, but since then they have settled down. And remember, it was 11-0 Piner. So since then, a 37-13 run for the Hounds. I guess you can call that a run. For Hillsburg, the thing they've done is early, they were just letting Piner take some good looks from three. But you know you've got Chapman back there, so you can close out a little harder sometimes. And Piner just hasn't had those same looks. Hillsburg's going to hang on. Sumner rattled the rim. Piner Prospectors were the Battle of the Fans champions for the SCL. 
They got their banner at halftime here, and that one is lost out of bounds by Hillsburg. Seven turnovers for the Hounds. They had four in the first quarter. They've done a very nice job since then taking care of the Rock. Here comes Scotty Erickson now with a minute and 15 to go in the third. Piner falling behind. Can Piner get this thing to 10, less than 10 before the fourth quarter? Make a little mini run. Try and give him a little confidence. Chapman with his fifth rebound of the night. Law pass underneath. Here's Chapman, San Ramon. Trying to keep him out, but he loses the handle. Bodies diving. The possession arrow favors Hillsburg, so the Hounds will hang on. Sadler, Adonis, Gutierrez, and Carpenter checking in now. Coach Erickson trying to keep fresh legs on the floor. He talked about conditioning and what LP meant to the Montgomery Vikings. That came into play the other night. They went into overtime against Newman, and they were definitely the fresher team. And they won that one to get to the championship tomorrow night. It'll be Montgomery and Windsor. And Lawrence Phillips is a big part of why that Montgomery team is in such great shape every year. It's not only physically, mentally, too. I think that was the biggest thing for me is going through those workouts are so grueling. And you have to find the strength inside your head to keep going. And I think that was why when you come to the JC, you really didn't feel it late in games. Here we go. 30 seconds to go in the third. Foul underneath, away from the ball. Against one of the Hounds, it looks like. That's three actually on Hubble who picked up that one. Away from the ball. Bounce pass down low. Sadler might have taken a little bump just after the shot. No call and Vasquez has the board now. Here come the Hounds. Shot clock is off. Tapped away by Sadler. Three on one. San Ramon goes all the way to the rack. That's a tough finish right there by San Ramon. Full speed. He's got a body there. He's got two teammates. Great finish. Heyman at the buzzer, and he's fouled. He's going to shoot three freebies with the clock at 1.4. Oh, my goodness. Why would you possibly bump a three-point shooter from midcourt? That's killer. It's absolutely killer. Now you put him at the line. Hillsbury's got a chance to get this thing to 14. Here it is. Right there, just a little bump, kind of reached in. Usually you don't see it on a reach. Usually you'll see it on a contest. But he was going for the ball, and there's no positive play there going for the basketball. Even if you get it, the clock's going to run out. Oh my, Piner might dodge a huge bullet right here. If he sinks all three of these, it's 40 to 26 going into the fourth. A tough mountain to climb, as is. It's 11, and you're one or two baskets away from getting right back in the game. He gets one of the three. And the buzzer beater is no good, so we have completed three. And it's Hillsburg still leading this one, a seven-point third quarter, and three of those were from the free throw line for Piner. They're going to have to find an answer in the fourth. The first three in the books, the final eight, will be coming up here in the SCL Tournament Championship game.
There you see, very happy bunch. And our title sponsor, Oil Stop, drive through oil change, stop by for an incredible service experience. And that is why they won the Battle of the Fans. Here we go, 38-26. Heider almost got a little momentum shift by the two missed free throws. If it was three, it almost felt like Heider was going to gain from it just off of a momentum standpoint. Obviously not the fact that Hillsburg was going to make three, but kind of funny how things changed on a foul on a shooter at half court. Carpenter will shoot a pair. Great all-round player for the Prospectors. Senior. So a very good baseball player. Has a chance to make it a 10-point game. And he does just that. First two points of the night. Full court pressure by the prospectors. The steal. The lay-in. And it's an eight-point game. Adonis, Gutierrez, and one. Here come the prospectors. 19 seconds off the clock to start this fourth quarter. You can't ask for anything more than that if you're Mike Erickson. Quick score, get some free throws, get a steal, score again, chance for a three-point play. Doesn't get it. That would have been huge. Try to finish off the old-fashioned and really give a big boost to the prospectors. Prospectors definitely turned it up a notch or two defensively. We'll see how the Hounds handle it. Vasquez guarded by Adonis Gutierrez. Chapman back to Hubble. Down low, they collapse on the big man, but he scores anyways. 14 points for Chapman. That's great feel right there by Chapman. Sees the guy on his left where the double is, spins to the other side. Nobody along that baseline, it's an easy two. Sadler with a nice fake, but doesn't finish. Chapman now with six rebounds, and here come the subs in. Scotty Erickson back in. Christian Gutierrez back on the floor. Ten-point game. Hillsburg handles the pressure very well. Again, no dribbling, keeping the ball up above. Man, Hillsburg, if they wanted, they could have layups right now against this press break. Chapman and Gutierrez, or is that San Ramon? That's San Ramon, go to the floor. San Ramon and Chapman were kind of tangled up, and San Ramon fell, brought Chapman with him. Took him down to Chapman. Sometimes when you're so big, the officials, I think sometimes it can creep in your mind a little bit. You're calling it so many times, and it's almost good to have some smaller players once in a while on the bigger guy so they can sometimes get away with a little more. Inbound for the Hounds. The three by Sumner. Ten points for Jack Sumner, and the lead is back up to 13. Huge response by Hillsburg after giving up five quick points to start this fourth quarter. Briscoe partially blocked. Another block for the Hounds. What a night for them defensively. And Chapman stepped up there. Briscoe tried the floater, but Chapman, a great defensive play to come up and get a hand on it. A lot of time left, no reason to panic if you're Piner, but you do need to chip away at this lead, and there's another block. Swan now has two blocks. It is a block party here tonight. Swan tries the three. That's up and over the top. You just start to wonder, how's Piner going to start scoring right now? They got to do it in bunches and haven't been able to, to get many looks from outside. They've kind of gotten away from 
the penetration and kick game that had some success earlier in the ballgame. All right, it's 43-30. We'll step aside during this timeout and be back with more from the Santa Rosa Junior College's AL Pavilion. Uh, we'll serve you and your passengers with a complimentary beverage. Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite, coffee, tea, hot chocolate, hot cider, or even a bottle of cold, refreshing water. Want to check your emails, surf the web, or get some work done when you're in for service? Use our high-speed Wi-Fi. It's free. We'll also provide a free car wash with your oil change so your car looks as good as it runs. How convenient is that? Oil Stop, we're here to serve you. Hey. One more foul for Hillsburg and Piner will be in the bonus. He'll, the prospectors have a couple to give and when you're behind, that can be kind of a detriment. At some point, you want to get the other team on the free throw line. So with 5.34 to go, there's plenty of time to pick up a couple more, but right now it is Hillsburg in control. The prospectors made a nice little run, but they got it to eight, and that's as close as they've been in the second half. San Ramon doesn't get it off the glass. And the foul from behind by Gutierrez. And I've got him for three. Good action by Piner. Can't ask for a better look than that. And indeed, Gutierrez does now have three personal fouls. The middle is open every time for Hillsburg. Once you get it to the middle, square up, face your basket. Look up ahead that time. Kind of easily moved it up, didn't throw it ahead. Erickson almost got the steal. The drive and the lay-in by Swan. Swan's had a nice night. He's got 10. Go for the steal. That's what happens. Breakdown defensively. Another man had to step up. Found the open guy and an easy layup. 15-point lead. Briscoe, a little short. Rebound. Gutierrez, and he's fouled. I talked to, about getting more looks from outside, and those those ones right there aren't the looks you want, though. You want a catch and shoot. That one was deep and a little bit forced for Piner. Penetrate, throw it out, find the man. They've been going inside a lot. Had some success for Gutierrez here getting to the line, but the big guy inside, you got to either have a really good floater or you don't shoot it at all. You just give it out. Christian Gutierrez with seven points on the night. Gets the free throw there. 45-31. And there's a foul as Heyman is hit by Scotty Erickson has the fifth team foul on Piner. Officials trying to step in and make sure everybody's cool. You know what doesn't get tired? We're talking about Scotty Erickson possibly with that knee getting a little tired. Being a competitor, you never get tired of that. And Scotty Erickson right there, have a little few words for the freshman from Hillsburg. Fight for the rebound. Sadler comes up with it. Erickson, what a move. Oh my goodness. Scotty Erickson with 11 points now. Left hand away from the defender, high off the glass. The two guys right there. That's about as tough a finish as you'll see. Going full speed, too. Looks like we may get a double foul here. Chapman and Carpenter kind of mixing it up underneath. Yep, and that is the case. Chapman's just trying to carve out position inside. Both those guys battling for the block. Yeah. 
Both teams are in the bonus now. Heyman tried to buy a foul call. The ball still loose. It's going to be off Piner. They were scrambling for the ball right there. Well, if you like tonight's coverage, we'll have more for you tomorrow night. NBL, girls and boys doubleheader, Newman and Montgomery girls, and then Windsor and Montgomery in the nightcap at 8 p.m. We'll start at 6.15 tomorrow night. That is a shot clock violation right there. So Piner comes up with a huge stop. They're down by 12. It's now or never, 3.31 to go. You got a chance to get under double digits. You've got to make your run net right now if you're the prospector. Yeah, great defensive possession. You got to get a bucket here. You got to get a bucket. Stop and score, stop and score. It's the end of the game for Piner. How are they going to get a basket here? Just to, got it in transition for Erickson. Now they're going to go back to this UCLA cut and a ball screen on the left wing. Erickson gets it to Briscoe. Sadler up top. Christian Gutierrez guarded by Chapman. Chapman bumps him. No call. Briscoe back up top to Scotty Erickson. 3-10 to go. Prospectors need a basket. Carpenter drives and dishes. Sadler for three. He got it. Jared Sadler makes it an eight-point game. Or excuse me, a nine-point game. 45 36, but it is under double digits. Hubble gets it over to Swan, and now Hillsburg is going to chew on a little shot clock right here. Lob underneath, ball loose, and may have been a foul call just before the ball went out of bounds, so Chapman is going to shoot a pair. He's 0 for 2 so far at the free throw line, so fouling him in the paint may not be the, the worst thing you can do right now. Yeah, back to that last offensive possession for Piner. That's the best possession they've had since that start to the game. They moved it around, give Carpenter a ton of credit, jump stop, fundamentals, baseline pass, finds an open man for a quarter three. Sure enough, Chapman misses, and there is a foul. We're going to go to the other end, and I believe it's going to be one and one for Piner now as both teams are in the bonus. Prospector with the chance to score with the clock stopped. It's getting chippy now, late into the game. It'll be Gutierrez shooting one and one, and for Hubble, that's four fouls. Big one right there for Gutierrez, who now has Nine points on the night. Last thing you want if you're Hillsburg is to foul, stop the clock, give Piner a chance to regroup and go to the free throw line. This is a make, you can pick up full court again. And he got them both. Timeout prospectors as they have pulled to within seven. Gutierrez makes both of them. We will step aside ourselves right here. And we've got a good one here at Hale Pavilion. It's 45-38, 2.41 to go here in the SCL Finals. Bear Republic Brewing Company invites you to discover their diverse menu, family-friendly atmosphere, and freshly brewed beers on tap. Both brew pubs in Healdsburg and Ronard Park serve up traditional pub fare with a twist, including signature burgers, salads, and specialty items like brewer's mac and cheese, or the classic barbecue pork sandwich made with sauce from Peter Brown Tribute Ale. The menu at the Ronard Park Brew Pub includes pizza and delicious flatbread sandwiches for lunch Monday through Friday. And the original Bear Republic Brew Pub in historic downtown Healdsburg has locally produced artisan cheeses and charcuterie plates carefully crafted with unique ingredients. Both locations offer a relaxed, casual dining experience, perfect for lunch, dinner, or any time. Open every day at 1130. For all details, visit BearRepublic.com. Hi, this is Richard Norgrove of Bear Republic Brewing Company. Come visit us in Rona Park or Hillsburg for an award-winning Racer 5, Pace Car Racer, or Double Ought Pilsner. So here we go, 2.35 to go. The Hounds get it up the floor now. Their lead has been cut. Chapman underneath, got it, and the foul. Trey Chapman with perhaps his biggest basket of the night. You have to foul him harder. If you're going to foul him, you can't let him get the shot off. He missed his last free throw, sent him to the line, not with a chance to go for a three-point play, though. Chapman will try to complete the three-point play. The lead is back up to nine. 
16 points for Chapman. Make it 17. Certainly doesn't feel like a 10 point game. Feels like two, two or three right now with the way this crowd's been going. Still time, two minutes and 15 seconds to play. Erickson to Briscoe. Briscoe sees the big man and retreats. Braden looking for help, finds Erickson. Chapman blocked it. Another opportunity for Scotty, off the mark. Chapman with five blocks tonight. Swan with his third rebound. Huge possession right here for Hillsburg. Under two minutes to play. Carpenter desperately trying to keep Chapman out of harm's way, and that one's in and out. Gutierrez with his seventh rebound of the night. Great box out by Carpenter. Briscoe looking for room. Scotty Erickson spins. Shot blocked, oh my, Swan with his third block of the night. 12 blocks for Hillsburg. Heyman, oh, that would have been a backbreaker. Gutierrez somehow keeps that one, and he's fouled by Swan. Gutierrez had to use his tippy tip fingers and fingernails to keep that one from bouncing right back to Swan. And now Christian Gutierrez will shoot two. It's a double bonus situation. Heyman going for the knockout punch, as you see, it was great defense inside by Desmond Swan. But Heyman right there, a little bit showing he's a freshman. You don't want to shoot that, keep moving it around. It's a clock move, but throws it up, misses, and then a foul stops it. So Ryder still has a chance. Gutierrez has made five of six from the free throw line tonight. It's just three field goals for Christian. Doesn't get the second, Chapman has it. And it's taken away and laid in by Gutierrez. Oh my goodness. The prospectors refuse to go away. Tie up, some tempers flaring. And Hillsburg somehow got a timeout in the middle of all that. What? <laughs> I did not see that coming. So, 101 to play. It's just a 30 second timeout. Well, I'm, I'm mad over here because if I'm Coach Erickson and it's right in front of you, this hap you see this happen all the time. It's in the corner, the basketball is in the corner. They've got a great trap. I believe it was Swan who had it. He had nowhere to throw it to and the guy starts hugging him. It was a foul, it was clearly a foul. Heider's bench didn't think so, but if you stay straight up or at least reach for the basketball, you're gonna get it back and instead they foul him. I hate it. It's my least favorite play right now. You see it all the time. Had a great trap down low in the corner, and, and it was a foul. It was the right call. Apparently, they called the timeout before yeah. the foul. Yeah, they called it before the foul anyway, but man. Prospectors desperately trying to come up with a steal. Under a minute to go. There's the trap. They got the ball away. Nice steal. Here comes Gutierrez. Bump by Heyman, he'll go to the line. Ball was taken away by Johannes. Gutierrez ends up going back to the free throw line. He's got 11 points on the night. Or check that, 12 points on the night. Piders just battling here. This might have been a little bit of a reach. You watch the replay, got the ball clean. Good save. Gutierrez. Short off the front rim. Could use these free throws right here. Got one of two. 13 for Gutierrez. It's a six point game. Two possessions. Close to a five second call. A chance at a 10 second here. They get it across. Chapman, I think, was thinking about the lob, but they go back up top, and now the foul's called on Johannes. Neod Johannes, the junior guard, and 
if you're Piner, it's that time. you got to start fouling. Yeah, and I'm going to talk about a play here that probably nobody in the building was really looking at. It's Brennan Carpenter down there. It was two on one. Hillsburg could have got a lamp go and get fouled at least. And Carpenter played a cat and mouse game, forced Hillsburg to throw it out. Vasquez misses the first. Xavier Vasquez, who has not scored tonight, but he's been very important to Hillsburg in terms of getting the ball up the floor against the pressure. Piner's just kind of running around right now. I don't even think they know what they're doing defensively. Earlier it was a 1 2 2 press, but right now they're just kind of man to man scrambling. He misses both. An opportunity for the prospectors. Scotty Erickson looking for room. Gotta go. Briscoe back to Sadler. Good look. He got it! Jared Sadler pulls Piner to within three. Oh, what a clutch shot right there by Jared Sadler as he nails it. Timeout, Piner, 48-45. The crowd is on its feet here at Hale Pavilion as Piner comes up huge. Sadler sticking the three. If you play basketball in Sonoma County, you do now if you have. This is the kind of game, this is what you kind of dream about as a little kid, is playing at the junior college, whether it's the NBL title game, whether it's an NCS title game, you want to be in a close game with a chance to win it late in front of a crowd like this, man, there's nothing better. So here we go, another big impound, just 19 seconds to go. Quick inbound and a quick foul, and it's going to be Jack Sumner who goes to the line. The last guy you want to foul is Desmond Swan. He's a 75% free throw shooter. I might even put Chapman in there to try to get a rebound right now. They're gonna, we're gonna have everybody play back, but oh my, he missed it. Sumner missed the first one. You don't absolutely need a three here. 17 and a half seconds, plenty of time. They're gonna give you a two. You take it. It's one of two. What a game, timeout now taken by Hillsburg, 49-45. Actually, no, he doesn't want the timeout. Just a substitution, Subner has 11 points tonight. Piner's down to just one timeout. Here we go, Sadler pulls up and sticks another clutch shot. It's a two point game. The final timeout taken. Sadler has eight here in the fourth quarter. And we'll take a quick break. It's 49-47 Hillsburg over Piner. We'll be back with more in just a moment here in the NCL Tournament Championship game. When you come to Oil Stop, we'll serve you and your passengers with a complimentary beverage. Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite, coffee, tea, hot chocolate, hot cider, or even a bottle of cold, refreshing water. Want to check your emails, surf the web, or get some work done when you're in for service? Use our high-speed Wi-Fi. It's free. We'll also provide a free car wash with your oil change so your car looks as good as it runs. How convenient is that? Oil Stop, we're here to serve you. Piner is out of timeouts. It's a two-point game, 10 seconds to play. Sadler has hit a clutch three, then he comes back with a clutch two. Prospectors were down by 13, just moments to go, and they quickly foul. And it's gonna be Desmond Swan, who is their best free throw shooter, 
at 75% who will go to the line at the other end of the floor. Your best hope is that he makes one of two and you get a chance for a tie and send it into overtime. Got the first. Didn't even hesitate. Swan has 11 points. And he calmly sticks them both. Time is of the essence now for Piner. Sadler quickly up. Gutierrez and one more block for the big man. Briscoe throws it up and over the top. Chapman with his sixth block of the night. Wow. Pump fake, the pump fake man. Right here, he he elevated before Gutierrez was even really thinking about taking that shot. There was no shot for Gutierrez. Want to once again thank tonight's title sponsors, Bear Republic Brewing Company with two locations, one in Hillsburg, one in Rona Park, a great place to bring the family for lunch or dinner and oil stop, drive through oil change, stop by for an incredible service experience. Great one here tonight. Tomorrow night we'll have two more great games starting at 6.15 live here from Hale Pavilion, the Cardinal Newman Montgomery Girls, the Montgomery Windsor Boys. It would take a miracle now as Hillsburg leads by four, and they've got the rock. Piner will, of course, try to deny the inbound. They get it to Swan, and about .5 left. That's it. And Swan will have a chance to go to the line. Two clutch free throws by Swan. Huge part of this game, and then yet another block for Hillsburg. And how about Chapman? Not only blocking a shot, but doing it way beyond the three-point line. Yeah, he's come out a couple times. He, he's shown how versatile he is as a shot blocker because he doesn't just need to stand around in the paint. He can come out and block stuff out on the three-point line. Gutierrez has fouled out. Point five, not much Piner can do as he makes the second one, 13 points for Swan, and that is a final. The Hounds win it by five, but boy, that wasn't easy. They were down by 11, they let a 13 point lead get cut to two, and yet they come up with big plays when they needed them. The block shots, the free throws, and they are the undisputed Sonoma County League champions for 2018. Yeah, they're the best team in the SEL. I think, you know, Piner, man, they gave them all they could handle, especially late in this game. And a lot of times you'll say, oh, well, the score doesn't indicate what this game was, because if you look at the score of this game, this one was really, the Hounds led it by double digits other than that great start for Piner. And Piner was just able to make a couple plays, stay in the basketball game. But man, Chapman was impressive. Defensively, Hillsburg was so good. Piner just couldn't get enough good looks from anywhere on the floor. And uh, Hillsburg will be interested to see how they do in NCS playoffs. And it is not the end of the road for either of these teams. They will no doubt be North Coast section participants. Piner, Division Three, Hillsburg, Division Four. And we wish them good luck on their journey in NCS. It's really in a super exciting time of year for your high school basketball player. Yeah, it was a fun one tonight. I'm really excited to see that, uh, that Windsor Montgomery game tomorrow. I think I think you got two really good, well-coached basketball teams, two teams that like to do things different ways. That Windsor's athletic, Montgomery, they're going to run great offense, and they're going to grind you out on defense. So that'll be a, a fun one tomorrow. You and Troy are going to have a good time. Trey Chapman named the MVP. He's got the trophy in his hand. A well-deserved trophy. He scored 17 points, had eight rebounds, and had six blocks. I don't know what was more impressive. I'm going with the blocks. Yeah. I think the blocks were the most impressive thing yeah, for you, him tonight. You could have got rid of everything he did offensively tonight, and he would have impacted the game. 
as much as anybody on this Hillsburg team because defensively, just the thought of him was scaring Piner to go inside. By San Ramon. And then was trying to make threes, and he was still coming out there and blocking shots. So impressive night for him. Yep, there he is all night long making blocks right and left. So a great night for us. That's going to do it for our coverage. Great job by our crew here tonight. Our director, Brian Leach. Our replay director and engineer, Marty Cornfield. Michael Barabelt on graphics. Merlin, Lorenzo Merlin on camera, uh, along with Matt Wagner and David Day. Overall, great night. Griffin Epstein, our production assistant. And uh, Rylan, I really appreciate you being here tonight. Had yeah. to bring back some memories for you. Yeah, it was a blast. I always like coming play to JC. Like I said, man, if you're a, you're a kid in Sonoma County, and you know when you're young, you always come to these games. They always seem like they're going to go down to the wire, even when they're not close. They somehow end up being close, and uh, it was just a, another great night of, of basketball uh, here in Sonoma County. All right, well, the SCL season is in the books, but plan to be with us tomorrow night as the North Bay League take center stage. We'll be live at 6.15 for the girls and the boys games back to back. Until then, for Ryland Cobry, I'm Dave Cox saying goodbye for all of us here at YSN365.com. Have a great night, everybody. Bear Republic Brewing Company invites you to discover their diverse menu, family-friendly atmosphere, and freshly brewed beers on tap. Both brew pubs in Healdsburg and Ronard Park serve up traditional pub fare with a twist, including signature burgers, salads, and specialty items like brewer's mac and cheese, or the classic barbecue pork sandwich made with sauce from Peter Brown Tribute Ale. The menu at the Ronard Park Brew Pub includes pizza and delicious flatbread sandwiches for lunch Monday through Friday. And the original Bear Republic Brew Pub in historic downtown Healdsburg has locally produced artisan cheeses and charcuterie plates carefully crafted with unique ingredients. Both locations offer a relaxed, casual dining experience, perfect for lunch, dinner, or any time. Open every day at 1130. For all details, visit BearRepublic.com. Hi, this is Richard Norgrove of Bear Republic Brewing Company. Come visit us in Rona Park or Hillsburg for an award-winning Racer 5, Pace Car Racer, or Double Ought Pilsner.